spit facts, spit facts, go get your kick back, kick back up, yeah, go spit facts, spit facts, go get your kick back, kick back up, yeah, go spit facts, spit facts, go get your kick back, kick back up, yeah, go spit facts. What's going on, friends? Enoch here with another episode of Get to Know. And this week, I got the man himself, who I consider a king among men. Um, somebody that uh, who not only possesses the qualities of interior discipline, which is the proper definition of manhood, uh, the, a virtue, but also is able to articulate it and help other men reach that goal. I have with me here in honor, uh, Mr. Elliot. Is it Hussle? Pulse, pulse, like pulse with an H, <laughs> Mister Mister Hulse, I uh, thanks for uh, thanks for coming on and hanging out with me, bud. Yeah, I'm, I've, been, I've been digging your music, bro. Pretty cool stuff. I love your vibe. Appreciate that, bud. Yeah, um, if you all don't know, uh, uh, my album is fresh out the oven. Came out yesterday. Day is Volt. Second, that's my sophomore album. Second album uh, for the year. So I. Uh, I, uh, I appreciate you coming on, man. Um, I, I wanted to give some music for the people who lift weights, so uh, I, I added a couple of tracks on there with uh, with you guys in mind too. So uh, I appreciate the uh, the motivation nice. and uh, and the inspiration. So I just want to get started. Uh, you want to tell uh, really quickly uh, what year you were born, Elliot? What year? Yeah, I'm born in 1979. Wow. Okay, 1979. So you went through most of the 80s and the 90s. That's where you grew up. Okay. Yeah, I grew so, up with uh, Nintendo and uh, <laughs> He-Man and uh, Transformers and GI Joe. Right, drinking right. water from the fire hose. <laughs> <laughs> Playing outside until the lampposts came on. Right. That's right. What uh what uh state did you grow up in? Uh, New York. I grew up uh, Long Island, New York. Okay, Long Island, New York. Um, Saturday morning cartoons. What what was uh, you, you mentioned some of those? What was uh, what was your go to? I don't remember what Saturday morning brought. That's only that you have to watch cartoons on Saturday morning. It's the only time the cartoons came on. Okay, uh, but then they had them before school and after school. But the cartoons I remember: Thunder Man. I remember Thundercats, GI Joe, He Man. Yeah, uh, those were the. Those are the ones that I probably watch the most. Okay, got it, got it. And um, so, did you uh, play any sports growing up? Or yeah, what? football. I so my I, I tried my hand at almost everything as a kid. Right, I was a real I was fast and I was strong, but okay, kind of uncoordinated, I guess. Mm. I sucked at baseball. It was too boring yeah. for me. I would I, I had ADD, so I was just like. Lose track of what's going on. <laughs> Basketball, I would foul of every game in the first quarter of basketball. Every game, it was just it was a countdown until Elliot fouled out. And so my parents didn't know anything about football. But the other parents were like, "You know, Elliot probably should be playing football because I was tackling people. I guess I don't know. I'm like, how is everything I do a foul? Yeah. And uh, they put me in football, put a helmet on my head, and told me to run into people. It uh -huh. was like I was born for that. So I I excelled at football, earned a college scholarship, captain of the football team and all that stuff. So I found, Sounds like I found my way probably about seventh grade, and that's when I got football. Okay, so f football was your sport. Now, um, did you ever watch like basketball or football growing up? I mean, the seven, the 80s and 90s, that was kind of the uh, – some people call it the golden era of the NBA. Yeah, I did. One time I was in high school, I started watching it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you have a favorite uh, team or a favorite player at the time? Man, Knicks. Of course, man. I watched the Knicks. Uh, Star was a man. I used to watch him, you know, and uh, Patrick Ewing and uh, Mason. Uh, yep. These are the guys who were on the team back then. That was, uh, Anthony I guess Mason it was like 90, right. 92, 93. That's when the Knicks were winning. Yeah. The Knicks, uh, the Knicks made it to the finals, what, in 95, right? Lost it to, to, to Houston, to the Rockets, I believe, after Michael left. That That's right, 95. Yeah. 95, yeah. What about mm -hmm. football? Did you, uh, do you have a favorite team, Jets or Giants? Jets. Yeah, Jets and Giants. I like both of them, but 
because I grew up on Long Island, I spent a lot of time going to Hofstra, right around, you know, the block of me, basically. And I watched their, um, the Jet Spring training all the time. So I get an opportunity to meet the players and see the players. So I just, by default, became a Jets fan. Okay, got it. So growing up, um, pop culture, what, what were some of the, uh, the, the sitcoms that you really got into in the 80s and 90s that, that you liked? Oh man, Cosby Show! <laughs> I gotta say that was like the first show. To, like my whole family would get together on Thursday nights and watch the Cosby Show. It was huge. Is that right? Yeah, it was all about the Cosby Show. My whole family, and then uh, that the eighties and the nineties. That's when like Married with Children and The Simpsons came out, <laughs> and so it started getting a little bit more degenerate. We went from the Cosby Show, which is like a, a respectable black family, right to Al Bundy and Homer yeah. Simpson. So that's the shift between the eighties and the nineties. That's right. That's right. Yeah. And then you, I think it was this, I think it was back in the seventies or you had like good times in those shows. And then the eighties was the, the Cosby show was one of the big ones. Um, and then in the nineties, like the other, like blue call, I mean, the, like a blue collar family show was family matters. That was like, that's the right. Cosby. <laughs> And and Urkel, yeah. Did you ever watch yeah, Fresh Prince? That. Yeah, I watched Fresh Prince. That's right. Yeah, yeah. I watched that as well. Yeah, those little you, shows. You bring them back some memories. You remember some of these like like not not as well known shows like the game shows like uh, Legends of the Hidden Temple or Guts. Remember those shows in the nineties? No, no. We, I don't know if that was on cable TV or what, but we didn't have cable growing up. Of we course. just had you know the, the, the eight channels that. You twist the dial and you watch. And my dad was <laughs> adamant. He was like, I'm not getting no cable TV. Right. And we just, we just had that same TV with dial my whole childhood growing up. That's basically. funny. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, so because you decided that you played outside most of the time. And with friends, you played football and stuff like that. Now, uh, were you the kind of, we were also the man that didn't come back home until it got dark? You got called in or you played outside most of no, the time? No, we had to be home for dinner. Right. I was once my dad adamant about okay uh we had to be home uh to have dinner with the family okay and so we would come home then we would go back out sometimes but not very not much after that we had to be home before dark a lot of times sure. we now we'd be sitting in the bedroom looking at especially when it was like daily savings and like the, the sun's up still more like seven eight o'clock at night in the summertime like the sun is up my dad right. was like no that's it it's time for you guys to be in we look I'm outside the window and we see all the kids running around still. We have to, we'd be up in our bedroom shouting out at them, but like we couldn't go out anymore. So Right, right. <laughs> you have a, a trick. <laughs> you have a favorite season? Like you you uh you enjoyed more in mean, New York you, you you went to the four seasons, I'm assuming, right? Do you have like a favorite season? Oh, man, like? Always fall. Fall? Fall is the best. Yeah, fall wow. is the best. Of course, because of football season and all that. But it was just nice, you know, all the leaves change and the uh it's just beautiful. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Fall is beautiful, uh, especially in the in the East Coast. It's it's real nice. You um, uh, let's move on to high school. Um, so you said you you played basketball a little bit, and then you were talking to everybody. Fouled out the first first quarter. Uh, football was your main became your main sport. Uh, so did you play in high school? And if you did, what position did you play? Yeah, I played high school and I played college. Uh, believe it or not, I was an undersized defensive lineman. I played okay. nose guard, and I led the I led the whole conference in sacks because I'm really built like a running back. So you imagine putting a running back at nose guard, and I would shoot the gap every single time. So as soon as the ball was snapped, I'm like on top of the quarterback. <laughs> so they just you know they put me on defense, and I just destroyed. Then when I got That's to dope. college. I ended up playing uh, running back and defensive line because I got recruited on defensive line because it was like, wow, this kid, he's like leading everybody in sacks. So I led the team in college. I led the team in sacks and touchdowns. So wow. I played both ways at St. John's University. Mm -hmm. Okay. So in high school, um, were you was it a big dating scene or did you kind of keep to yourself? No, I, I married my high school girlfriend. I had Is one girlfriend right? throughout all of high school. Yeah, we met wow. in ninth grade, and she's still here. <laughs> wow, that's incredible! You don't hear that much. No, so, <laughs> that's kind of weird. So, 
tell me that. So t- tell me the story of uh, uh, of of like your proposal. Like, did, was it like fancy or was it just casual? Did, did you go all out? So it's funny. My dad is from Belize. My parents are from Belize, and so he just he he's kind of like a jungle man. And he was red pill before I even knew what red pill was. That was he's just <laughs> alpha male. Yeah, I didn't know. Not until I discovered, oh, this whole alpha male, red pill, like, you know, awakened masculine thing. I was like, wait a second. That's been my dad the whole time. Now they call it toxic. Toxic masculinity. My dad was toxic masculinity. Red, red pill, toxic ma- masculinity. My dad was a toxic masculine man. So he, my mom would always complain about him. And tell a story about how he how he uh, proposed, and of course, you know, as a kid, you're, you know, I was influenced by hearing stories about my father, right, and right. Uh, he did it in a real like kind of like whatever way, like, hey, I'm gonna get married, and of course, my mom was like, yeah, of course, like it made sense. So I never imagined myself as a kid growing up. I always kept in my mind how my dad was just like, hey, let's get married, and how like base that is. And so I never saw myself getting on my knee. You know, I loved my girlfriend. I loved my wife. Right, right. But I never imagined that whole getting on your knee and groveling, begging her to marry. It was almost like, <laughs> yo, it's your privilege to marry me. Like, you're the lucky one. Who will get on my knee for? <laughs> that was his attitude. And I just kind of adopted the same attitude. So when it was time to get married, I was just like, hey, I just opened the ring. I was like, hey, let's get married. And of course. I like it. I love it. That's that's. I think that's how men should do it from now on. Yeah. Why are you getting on your knee for that? Doesn't make any sense. It's kind of what uh, uh same story that I, I did Tim Gordon last last week, and he said pretty much the same thing with him and Steph. So that's I'm 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 I'm, I'm catching this uh this this alpha male uh, approach to marriage. I like it a lot, which is really great. <laughs> so moving on uh, to college, uh, what college did you go to? St. John's University in New York. Okay, St. John's University. And did you um did you graduate with a degree or? Ah. I Sorry? studied. Uh, I I it was um healthcare administration. It was just some bullshit that I had to take classes, but I was really there to play football. Oh, I see. Okay, got it. Moving on to, to, to some music, if you don't mind. Um, so before I ask, uh, you're, you're, if you want to tell me who you who, who right now would be your favorite Catholic rapper, <laughs> right now, <laughs> I only know one. <laughs> Man, it's not like I got a Rolodex to go through. It's like, yo, I know this guy named Enoch, and that's about it. <laughs> I'll take it, but I appreciate that. <laughs> Um, yeah, so what, what kind of music did you like growing up? What were you into? Oh, I mean, so at first, I mean, I liked everything. I grew up in a, a Caribbean home. My parents are from Belize. And so I grew up listening to like soca and reggae. That's the music like I knew as a kid. I didn't have pop music back then. Um, mm-hmm. And so I was, you know, I was dancing to reggae. And, and so my parents had like these big parties because they had big families. You know, my dad sure. had like 12 siblings. <laughs> And so I grew up listening to that. But then when I remember my neighbor got his first tape, the neighbor, my, my cousin around the same time, I must have been like 10 years old. Actually, let me go back even further. Wow. It was a blank tape that he recorded some rap music that would come on. Rap music in New York, believe this or not. This was like maybe 1988, 89. You only hear rap music. It was like Thursday night, once a week, Thursday night at like eight, nine o'clock at night. So it was like from nine really? o'clock to 11 o'clock at night. Yeah. There was because everything else was pop music back then. You know, it was mostly Michael Jackson and right. it was pop music. Uh, rap wasn't a thing yet. It was very underground. And I remember it was like 1988, 89. My friend came with the tape. He was like, yo, listen to this. His name was Edward. He came, he was like, Yeah, hey, come and listen to this. And he put it on. It was the first time I heard rap music. I was like, What is this? Yeah. And of course, you know, your mind gone as a kid because it's so sensational. Right. It was the first time I heard it. I was like, Whoa, this is crazy. Said, yeah, you have to stay up late on Thursday night. You know, it's past bedtime. So you have right. to stay up late on Thursday night and turn it on this station. I think it was like, uh, it was Hot 97 before Hot 97. It was like, uh, like 98 something. I don't know. It was New York right. City. And, uh, 
I remember staying up late and like listening to this. And then I think the first tape, because back then it was tapes. Right. First tape I ever got was Digital Underground. I bought the, uh -huh. the first one I ever bought was the right. Humpty Dance. Digital, yeah, yeah, yeah. Digital Underground. Yeah. So of course, yeah, I grew up listening to to rap. It was you know Biggie and and Wu Tang, right? Nas and you know stuff like that. Nasty That's Nas not, that back then. Nas is my favorite <clears throat> rapper of all time, ever. Nasty Nas. Nasty Nas. Now I like I like the East Coast style better than the West Coast, even though I grew up in California. I liked um, Biggie, Wu Tang, uh, Nas, uh, uh, Mob Deep. Those guys were my favorite growing up. Cannabis, um, but mm -hmm. that's that's interesting. You say, uh, did you have a favorite rapper growing up? Uh, did I have a favorite rapper? Um, I definitely liked uh, Gangstar. Okay, Guru and Premier. Guru, like anytime anything Guru came out with yeah. or, or Premier Gangstar was like huge. I really liked Wu Tang. Yeah, you got a favorite artist from Wu Tang? Method Man. Meth. Yeah. Method Man, because that was the first. You know, his song was the first one that put Wu Tang on the scene. M E T H O D Man. And so the first yeah. time hearing that, this is new. This is different. It is. And uh, so, you know, everybody was listening to Method Man at the time. Um, then Jay, a little bit later, Jay Z came on the scene. Jay came out, yeah, and uh, he was he was pretty cool for a couple of years there, but that was basically it. And as is right there as well, got it. Okay, yeah, uh, Biggie was the one who gave Jay his, his stardom, I guess you would say. Uh, he was, he was, that's right, yeah, yeah, Biggie mm -hmm. was, was a huge influence, a lot of rappers at that time, too. Um, God rest his soul. Um, so moving on. So let me ask you this: as, as far as as far as dead artists, if you could go back and you could attend one concert from artists that are not alive right now, who who would you pick? Well, I'm happy you said Biggie because I didn't I didn't say Biggie, and he was right up there on that list too. <clears throat> and uh, it would it would it would be it would be Biggie. You go, Biggie. you go to Biggie. You go to Biggie, Biggie concert. Yeah, yeah. Cause it's just a vibe that's associated with it, like yeah, the type of the type of vibe that Biggie would have. It was laid back, but it was hard. Yeah. So I think I would enjoy being at a at a Biggie concert. Yeah. Biggie had great cadence. I mean, do you remember when Biggie and Bone Thugs and Harmony came out with that song, Notorious Thugs? Yeah. Yeah, his verse on that was like the cadence was unreal. It was yeah, he he has such a great cadence and a great voice. So, um. So non-rap related, what artists would you go to? Would you ever go back uh, to like a were you like a Michael Jackson fan too? Uh, I was to a degree. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I liked Michael Jackson. I liked okay. his. Uh, I like. Yeah, I mean, he's got so many hits that like you can't not <laughs> like Michael Jackson. I mean, <laughs> he's got a hundred hits <laughs> right. over the course of like twenty years. So, yeah, yeah, this stuff was good. Uh, when, when I, <laughs> when I started falling in love, right. When girls, when I met my girl and all of a sudden, like I started getting like heart eyes, heart <laughs> eye emojis, all of a sudden started vibing with Prince. Oh, okay. Cause you yeah. know, his songs are all songs and stuff. It's like real yeah. sexy songs. Right. And so right. I remember making out with my girlfriend in the basement, listening sure. to Prince. To, to I Prince. really like Prince. Yeah. Hmm? Prince. I always say this. Yeah, I always say this. Uh, Michael Jackson had a better career, but Prince was a better artist. I wouldn't argue with that. Yeah, I mean, because yeah. he I mean, he wrote all the songs, played every instrument known to man, and he could able to arrange yeah. everything to, for himself. So Prince was a more a diverse artist than Michael was. So, um, yeah. Moving on to, uh, um, you you you've got kids. Yes. Nice. What was it? What was it like when you? What was that? reaction when when your first child was born uh well just a sense of responsibility you know like mm. i like this is my life meant so more at the moment that she was born because it was like now it's not just me and of course wife could take care of herself right I, i'm there to provide and protect but at the same time yeah. she's an adult and so my sense of responsibility towards her and the baby at that time just gave me a, 
a dignity that I think I think most men lack today. Like we don't we don't really live for anything except for ourselves. You know, right. most of us live yoga lifestyles, and it's like, you know, how much pleasure could I have? Where in that moment, uh, I just wanted to work, and that's really, I think that's how a man loves. A father loves by working, right? Like a mother mm-hmm. loves by loving, in there yeah. cuddling you and kissing you and cooing over you. I think what happens, and I see this with a lot of my friends, their love is now I'm going to go and I'm going to do something about this. So right. they start double downing on work and like, you know, putting in more hours and, you know, I want to make sure I have everything to give to this unit now, which is the wife the, and the baby. Beautifully said, man. That's just, I know a lot of people, a lot of young folks, not really faith based folks, the young, young folks are admirated. Love Andrew Tate and what he's saying. I'm not the biggest fan. I can kind of see some of the natural law stuff that he's saying. But to me, brother, what, what the message that you're portraying to me, it has the full package. It's greater than what Andrew Tate would ever say because you have that virtue and faith understanding of it and dying to yourself for your family unit. And um, I, I, th- I think young men could absolutely take from your message better than anybody else's in the secular world, in my opinion. Yeah, it's, tough. it's a tough sell today because of how marriage has been attacked from so many different angles, but the big argument is divorce laws and divorce courts and how they're against the man. Of course, these women are not very virtuous to begin with, which is right. a part of the problem, the sexual revolution. And the part of the reason why they're not virtuous is because men are not virtuous. We're the ones that hold the, 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 the chastity is a masculine virtue. He says weaponized chastity. But yes, you know, once the uh, once the gates were let open, then you know, guys went wild. So the, the, you know, both sides, neither are virtuous, but the courts and the and the culture stacked against men in terms of marriage. And so I think for it to really make a comeback, we got to get it out of the, we got to get it away from the government. Marriage is, bet- is between a man and a woman and God the Father. The government mm-hmm. being a part of it and allowing divorce to be so easy, no fault divorce. And then the woman generally ends up taking most of what she doesn't deserve. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's, it's, it's backwards, right? Even if you look at the Bible, the way it's done thousands of years, there's wisdom in it. There's a wisdom in it in the way marriage was traditionally run but today everything's backwards so unless vir- and i guess it makes us it forces us back to virtue because if yeah. we can't rely on law we can't rely on the culture they they they're against marriage they're against family they're trying to destroy us so if we're ever going to turn it around we have to turn it around as individuals and as you know virtuous people not you know hoping that somebody else is going to do it for us that's a clear message, and that's probably the best that people are going to hear today, honestly. I mean, that's a, the, the, the proper understanding of masculinity is interior discipline and virtue. So I absolutely agree with you. And, and the fact that you portray it in such an elegant way and live it, I think, is, is why a lot of folks are uh, look up to a lot of what you do. Um, let's move on to, uh, if you don't mind, some like food. Because I know you didn't get as big as you are by not eating. So I know you you, you got to love some food. So. What is that? What is that one dish that if you had one, uh, you know, one last meal before you before you're gone that you have to have before you leave Earth? What's your favorite dish ever? Oh, if I had one, it would be a cowboy bone-in ribeye. Ah, uh-huh, okay. Like a stick on the bone when I'm done, just chew on it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you ever had a tomahawk before? Tomahawk. Maybe that's what I was thinking, but one with a big bone in it. Yeah, yeah, tomahawks. They got that tomahawk. big bone sticking out. That with that thick ribeye. Yeah, yeah, tomahawk steaks, man. They're 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 unreal. If you, if you never had a tomahawk steak, folks, have a tomahawk mm-hmm. steak. It, it'll change your life. Um, what's the um, so? <laughs> how many calories were you taking in when you were really pushing? And you still are, but uh, what's what's your calorie intake most of the time? Daily. Uh, when I was at my biggest. Yeah. 4,000 calories max. Wow. 4,000 calories max. It's incredible. Now, looking at uh, weightlifting, um, do you do you like lifting weights in the a.m. or the p.m.? Uh, I lift in the morning most recently. Okay. Uh, I get my son up. He turned 12 this year. 
And yeah. so now he gets up when I get up. That was that was his initiation into semi adulthood, manhood. So he gets up and he, he and I go walk dogs and train with him right. in, uh, in our warehouse in the, in the yard. Okay, got it. Okay, um, what's what's your max deadlift ever? Oh, ever? Yeah, uh, a little over seven hundred. I want to. I want to get out of here, man. <laughs> seven seven twenty or something like that. That is insane. That's ins <laughs> insane. You got to have yeah, a like good two lower back, a good core for that, right? To, in order, in order to deadlift. Yeah, yeah. That's what I thought. Oh, yeah, like, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if somebody is. More on the bigger side, got a, got extra weight. Your recommendation is to 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 lose that weight before he starts lifting, or lift to help lose that weight. Lose the weight first. Now you're gonna lift to lose weight, but the right. focus should be on drop pounds, drop the weight, because you're drop. gonna be more motivated by see changes in the mirror, and it's in a way, I don't want to say it's easier, but you'll melt those pounds off very quickly. So focus okay. on the big, on the, on the, on the easy wins, right? Easy win is dropping weight. That's a right. low hanging fruit. Drop the weight, bro. And then you'll be more motivated. Like, oh shit, I see something. There's some shape and you'll be yeah. motivated. To the but you got to drop the weight first. Okay. Got it. Um, what are some of your hobbies that, that, that you like to do outside of, you know, lifting weight or doing your YouTube channel and helping men become men? I don't know, man. I don't know if I really have any hobbies per se. Yeah. Uh, I like spending time with my family. I know this okay. sounds crazy for a lot of people. I home my kids are homeschooled. Same I'm here. here all day with my wife and my children, and I I just like being with my family. Like we'll go camping, uh, we'll go firearms training. I take them all out, and all my kids we get. I have them all rifled up, <laughs> go and nice. shoot guns. Um, just working around. We just moved on to 42 acres here in rural Florida. So I'm living on a ranch. Just working around a ranch. Um, living life. I, my Life is my hobby, man. I enjoy every bit of it. I love it. I love it. Okay. Um, moving on to faith. Uh, have you always been Catholic? Cradle Catholic. Yeah. I was baptized as a baby. Baptized as a baby. But I wasn't always enrolled in the faith. I fell away. Cool. Through you know most of my uh, teenage and early adulthood, and then I reverted to the faith in 2019. By the time I turned 40, 2019. Now, what was it that brought you kind of back to the faith, more of a traditional faith? Well, I had always. It's like the Holy Spirit had been with me the entire time because I've always been a religious man, um, but a rebellious man. And so I was in all kinds of different religions, right? I was, I, I was Baha'i for a while. I was different really? Protestant denominations. Yeah. Uh, yeah, me and my wife were married Baha'i. And so and we and through the Baha'i faith, we learned about it. I learned about Islam. So I was reading the Quran. Then I was involved in New Age stuff. So I was a lot of Eastern religion. I read the Bhagavad Gita. I read the Adi Chung. I mean, Hindu, Buddhist. So it's not like I was ever an atheist or uh, agnostic or anything like that. Like I believed in God. But I right. wasn't looking in my own backyard. And so I had just gone everywhere, every which way. And when it, this is the great thing, this is the thing, of, especially the Catholic faith. When I had maxed out my pride, which is basically what it was, <laughs> maxed out my pride and I found myself, you know, face down on the floor. Right. I had true contrition. And for the first time in my life, I'm like, I'm not a good person <laughs> and I need to acknowledge that and I need to repent and I need somebody that's going to hold me accountable because most of the, almost every other religion will tell you, oh no, you're okay the way you are. You're okay the way you are. God accepts you the way you are. And then when I started learning about the faith and I realized, wait a second, no, I'm not okay the way I am, but I have the sacraments that bring grace back into life. And so what God called me to do is to go to confession here I am, you know, 40 years old. I haven't done a confession since I was like 14. I, wow. You know, I got like 30 years of of mortal sins hanging over my, my head. And I don't even know, I don't even know where the nearest parish is. But uh God laid it on my heart. He said, Go confess your sins. You you're a part of my family in the church. 
And it was kind of almost dumbfounding to me. It was like, this doesn't even make sense because it was the last thing on my mind. And then I went and it was like a like a like a dark cloud was lifted from off my head. And I've just been going mass ever since. Brought my marriage into the faith, you know, convid- convalidated my marriage with my wife. She she was baptized as a child. She came back into the faith, brought all my kids into the faith, had them all baptized and confirmed. All this just the past year. So that's incredible, bro. Wow, that's I love what you said about true contrition, man. That's 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 so that grace, not only to receive that grace, but to respond to it is a very is a very important gift to have. Uh, burgers or hot dogs? Oh, burgers. Burgers all day, right? Um, dream car. Day. What? I didn't hear you. Oh, sorry. Uh, your dream car. Dream car? Yeah. Pickup truck or a Jeep? <laughs> <laughs> That's it. I like it. Pancake or waffles? Wow. Waffles. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, um, so, moving, so continuing on with with faith uh do you do you attend the uh, uh what they call the Novus Ordo or do you attend the traditional life mass local parish? a little bit of both okay a little bit of both i didn't know anything about the you know the the the, the difference i had no idea when i first when i came back all i knew was the was the Novus Ordo. Novus okay. Ordo. that's all i knew i grew up and then, right. you know, it's funny because I went to CCD as a kid. That's what they called it, you know, when you yeah. about faith about anything. I didn't remember nothing. And then when I got caught to the faith, I started on YouTube. And like YouTube, I got catechized by YouTube, right? Watching guys like Taylor Marshall and Doc, uh, Father Ripperger and Census Fidelium and, you know, and Tim right. and watching his videos. And so all of a sudden hearing about the man, I'm like, oh, okay. And so I went to go try it out, go see what it's about. I found one not too far. And then I started going to both. I would go because I had a local mar- parish that was closer to me. I would go there during the week. And then on Sundays, go to the Latin mass. And so we moved. And so now I found a pretty reverent, because you have different grades of Novo Ordo. Like you could have the one where, you know, they're talking about football and they're playing pop music. And it's like, where the hell am I? <laughs> But then you, there are some pretty reverent ones, you know, and so yeah. we found some, we found a pretty reverent, uh, the, the, the priest, the, he's he's very traditional, but I think because they went it a certain way for long, he got brought in, he keeps it, Novus Ordo, but brought in a lot of tradition, and um, so I enjoy going to that, and then we have a SSPX that's a little bit further away that I go to sometimes, and then sometimes we go to a, uh, a ordinate, I don't know if you've ever heard of this, but like yeah. the, the the chair of St. Peter, we have one right here, and so I, I kind of like bounce around. That's cool. Yeah, the ordinary was is great. Uh, Benedict B, Benedict sixteenth um, uh, is the one who uh, kind of helped initiate that and bring them back in. There were the uh, the Anglicans uh, who came back yeah. to Rome. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, so continuing on with faith, uh, would you what would you say was your favorite saint of all time? You oh well. I say Ignatius. Uh, which one? Ignatius of Loyola. Okay. So okay, there's some, and that's because he's my namesake. I was, I'm named Ignatius. My middle name is Ignatius. And when I learned about him, I was like, damn, that guy, I mean, he was a warrior, yeah. uh, a soldier. He went back. He brought that rigor. He brought that, that discipline, yep. spiritual exercises uh, into back into the church with the, the Society of uh, Jesus, right, which became right. the Jesuits. And I was like, right. man, that's a guy that's man after my own heart with that military kind of mindset. But then as I started learning more about different ones, I really fell in love with uh, Maximilian Colby. Mm-hmm. He's really the saint for our day, man, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, of course, there's so many beautiful um, female saints, like the Little Flower, yeah. And uh at St. Catherine and so yeah, those are those are a few. Okay. Got it. If you could pick somebody in history, anybody, if you were at a bar and three or four guys or big guys are just coming up to you and they want to start some trouble, um, and you could pick somebody in history, one person that would back you up, who would you pick? Oh man. 
I'm thinking like s- 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 somebody who has serious martial arts skill, like Bruce Lee. Okay. Like somebody who will snap your neck with their two fingers in a second. <laughs> somebody who's got, got that kind of skill. I know that he's not the only one. There's these guys that, you know, they know like Krav Maga or just like some kind of like military martial art. But I would okay. want somebody who's un- unassuming that will just be so quick and just snap everybody's neck in, <laughs> in a second. Right, okay. I have to say Bruce Lee because he's the first one that comes to mind. Man, between the two of you, that's a force to be reckoned with. I know some people that would pick you right now, like today. Like if you're in a bar <laughs> fight right now, who'd you pick? They'd probably say Elliot. <laughs> I, know, I know Tim might do the same thing. Uh, that's hilarious. Um, so as far as drink goes, do you uh, do you drink casually sometimes? I've given up drinking, but just recently. Okay. Uh, I, I, so, but I've been drinking red wine. That's what my thing was. You know, me and wife would drink. Uh, okay. You know, a nice Cabernet. You know, sure. That was it. Do you have a Do you have a favorite drink when you were drinking? That one that you would go to? Oh well, there are different brands of Cabernet that I would love. You know, I really like. There's um, uh, what the heck is the name of it? I can't remember off the top of my head right now. But yeah, just different red, sure. just ref- different red wine. Never really, I'm yeah. not really into liquor or anything right. like that. Beer, right. none of that. Just sure. red wine. Sure. Sure. MMA or boxing? Uh, I appreciate both, but I'm not really a fan of either. I don't watch. Um, I don't know. I would say MMA just because it's just, it's more dynamic. You know, they can go it. down on the floor. But those boxers are, are, are messed with. They're forced to be messed with too. So I don't know. Boxers are tough. Yeah. You got um, you have like your favorite MMA fighter of all time, best of all time. Nah, like I said, I'm really a fan. I uh, love Mike Tyson. You know, yeah. Grew up watching him knock people out in the first round. So I love his attitude, his mouth, just yeah. the things he says. To, he's such a toxic guy that you you have to be in, in, in you know enthralled with him. So, but, Yeah, um, Mike was great in the 90s, man. Bit. He was fun to watch. <laughs> yeah, he's a character. He's still a character, so I appreciate it. Yeah, favorite uh favorite state you've ever been to, Florida? Yeah, I would if I if I could don't leave Florida ever again in my life, I'll be all right. Okay. I love it here. What country I have, anywhere else? Favorite country that you want to visit? If I was to go visit a country. I don't even know, man. I, I don't know. I think maybe Poland. Okay. I'd like to go somewhere where the where the addition faith is still strong, you know? Yeah. Somewhere in Eastern Europe or like right. Portugal, you know, mm-hmm. maybe Fatima, Portugal. I don't know. But somewhere where I can see like the ancient faith being out like for thousands of years. Sure. Absolutely. That's a, that, that that's a good point. There's a lot of great stuff over there, Eastern Europe. And even anywhere in Europe. I mean, we were such a Christian nation before it um they uh, all men became effeminate at that time. Yeah. Um, so I had, I had this question, Anthony, over here trying to, trying to distract me. I, uh, so if you were looking at, uh, oh, sorry, I, I, lap pull downs or pull ups, what would be your advice? Pull ups, pull ups all day. Okay. Cause I mean, lap pull downs are great because you can get a bunch of motion that you can't get with pull ups. Yeah. Um, but if you can't pull yourself up, then you're not worth anything as a man. You should be able to just pull yourself up on something. So, got it. Okay. okay. <laughs> incline or decline bench? Uh, incline. Incline. Okay. That's one thing I think a lot of guys don't do as much. That upper pec area. You notice that? Yeah. A lot of people are just hitting that that flat bench. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I hit dips. And dips really shred. Work. So I do a lot of weighted dips these days. It's a little Got bit it. easier okay. on my shoulders. Really shreds the upper chest. Okay. That's that's awesome. Um, advice that you can give a young man right now who's struggling with um, any vice before, um, you know, before entering a commitment. Pray the rosary. Make it a prayer. Pray the rosary time day. 15 decades a day and you might not understand why you're doing it 
But while you're meditating on those mysteries and you make a, a discipline out of it, you're reordering your whole life. You're reordering your whole life towards worship and towards praise and towards meditating on God and the virtues and um, mysteries of Christ. It's like the Bible on beads. You know, you kill so many birds with one stone, so to, so to speak. And there's so many graces that are that are uh, associated with it. Whatever vice you're dealing with, you can always recommend yourself to Our Lady and the Rosary, and she will come to your aid. She will you should deliver those graces. Overthink it. You know, I think I've overthought it because there's so many amazing prayers in the faith. Like, you know, I, I have Father Ripperger's prayers for the laity, deliverance yeah. prayers. I'm like, man, these are just so powerful prayers. But if you just stick with basis prayers, your rosary, know your rosary. If you really get into it, pray it in Latin. Just make mm. that what I do. It's just I make it my prayer rule. It's like, hey, look, I could fall off in many different ways, but if I come back to the praying the rosary, life just falls in trap. Got it. Okay. I love that. So it's 2024, right? Pope Francis has passed on. And because you're a male baptized. Uh, they said, Elliot, you qualify. Habemus Popham, you are now the Pope of the Catholic Church. White smoke came out. Uh, what name, what Pope name are you choosing? And what would be the one thing that you would do that you would think would help the Universal Church? I would be Ignace. And I would I would seek to revive the Jesuits in its in its traditional form. I mean, the Jesuits, Ooh. of course, they've in a way have gone bad. Mm -hmm. And so they say, you know, um, but what a powerful order. I mean, the most intelligent, rigorous, disciplined, focused, dedicated warriors, spiritual warriors of the day uh, come, came out of that movement. And so I'd say, you know, uh, the Jesuits for the future, you know, bread just started all over again with the same spirit of, of their founding father, St. Ignatius. Now, I haven't heard that one before. That's actually really, really cool. Because they were a Jesuits force to be were reckoned. powerful, man. They were a force to be reckoned with at the time. You remember the 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 Jesuit the uh, in China, the Chinese martyrs, Jesuits. Yeah. I mean, those guys were incredible. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, Jesuits are nice. You know, they, they did a lot of good work and stuff. But the Jesuits were, were warriors. You know, yeah. I think of swords. I think of rigor. I think of discipline. I think of military. So that's probably where I would go with it. The Jesuits were the Wu Tang of the Catholic Church. That's right. <laughs> that's what we need. Of course, fall back to that kind of attitude, masculine attitude. Right. Okay. Man, I love it. I love everything that you're talking about right now. I'm gonna ask you one last question, and uh, we'll uh, we'll uh, end the, the stream, my friend. Um, um, my last question for you is this. Um, if you um, you had a pulpit and you had could tickle the ears of ev every single man in this whole world all at once, give me that one message that you tell every single dude. Return to the Father. Return to the Father. Return to your Father and God the Father. And that's the way we repair the society. Patriarchy revived. Yeah. Right? Look, God is our, but Christ says your head. God over Christ, Christ over man, man over woman, establish the order, the patriarchal order in this society, and everything will fall back in place. But it, it happens in our hearts first as men. That means we have to stop rejecting authority. Even the whole uh, Protestant Reformation, I don't even like to call it that, you know, it's, it's a revolt. The Protestant revolt is yeah. effeminate because it's, it's it's men rejecting authority and authority authority invested in men. Men are vested with authority. So when you reject authority, you reject ma masculinity. And that's that's how the fall of Shiark, fall of Christendom began when man stopped appreciating and respecting authority. We right, have to, right. if we can't be authorities in and of ourselves, if we don't fall back into and under authority. And so that's what Shiarchy is, return to the father. I can see that restoring society into its greater glory. Absolutely. I can see that for sure. You know, this is why I'm such a big fan of yours, bro. Um, a lot of guys, you know, will, will talk about the necessity of becoming a man in a proper man in a traditional sense. Or just in, I guess you would say in a more of a natural order sense. But, mm -hmm. but you actually took that and you brought it into practicality and you gave men purpose when they didn't have it. Because right now men don't have any purpose. 
I guess they're, they're major issues. They don't have any purpose. But you, 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 you take men and you, you say, listen, here's the purpose and here's the goal to strive for, and that uh, what you call warrior energy. And I, I, I appreciate that about you because if every single dude did what you do or saw masculinity as you did. Um, I think we can restore society to its greater glory easily. And so that's why I think your work is is extremely important because it's practical and, it, and and it's leading men to a higher purpose. Praise the Lord, man. Is this what the Lord is doing through me? You know, I'm I'm a fallen man like the rest. I don't I don't even know what I'm doing, right? By the <laughs> grace of God. I don't know. I'm just being me. And so right. what I look like, man, God is just carrying me somewhere that's useful. And so it's all out of grace of God, 100%. My marriage, my family, the family I was born into, the fact that I was born in an age with his YouTube, the fact that I was born with the charisma to say the things that I have, the boldness that my father passed on to me. I, I am anything, man. It's God's grace pouring through me and hopefully doing what he wants in this world, God's will. I love it, brother. Hey, man, anything else you want to say before we end this? No, uh, but I just want to say how honored I am to have met you and to come across your music and now to be Thank here you. on your show and stuff. And I love what you're doing. Keep going, bro. It's amazing. Thanks, brother. I appreciate it. God bless you and your family and uh, keep up the good work. I'm going to tell everybody about uh, you and tell my friends and family here in my parish too. and say, you know, check check this guy out because I, I believe your work is important. So, um, keep Keep up the good work. Thank you. And congratulations on your new album. I can't wait to listen to it. I'm going to listen to it now. Well, I'm working Thanks, out. brother. I got a. I made a song. Actually, I, I I saw one of your videos, and I and I I had this beat that, that that was just sitting there, and I made a song called "Real Men." It's on the album. I think it's like the fourth or fifth track on the album, and I made it specifically because you you had you, you had this inspiration that came out of you. I was watching one of your videos on YouTube, and I was like, man, this, we need some real men. So I made the song called "Real Men" on there. It's got such a hard beat. It's great for lifting and working out. So I uh, appreciate that. Okay. I'm gonna check yeah. that out now. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, God bless you guys. We'll uh, we'll talk to you guys soon. God bless.